welcome to Dhranath chemistry classes. In this video, I am going to discuss about the intermediate first year topic chemical bonding. In chemical bonding, I am going to discuss about the molecular orbital theory. In this concept, this is the second video. In my first video, I have discussed about the various postulates of molecular orbital theory. So I am going to continue. What are the various features of this molecular orbital theory? How molecular orbitals are forming? Then what are the conditions for the combining of atomic orbitals and the various aspects involved in this molecular orbital theory are going to be discussed. Thank you for watching Trinath Chemistry Classes. Please like the video, share and subscribe the channel. In my previous video of this molecular orbital theory, I have discussed about the postulates of molecular orbital theory. So according to this molecular orbital theory, which was proposed by Hund and Mullikan, the electrons in a molecular molecule are present in various molecular orbitals as the electrons of atoms are present in various atomic orbitals. And the atomic, orbital, atomic atoms low electrons the atomic orbitals low on tayo, Adevadanga molecules low on to electrons on titan molecular orbitals. So ye atomic orbitals combine with the atomic orbitals of comparable energies and proper symmetry combine to form molecular orbitals. Similarly, these atomic orbitals of the when atomic orbitals combine linearly, molecular orbitals are formed. And uh, an electron in a molecular orbital is influenced by one nucleus, whereas molecular orbital it is influenced by two or more nuclei. So that is very simply, my atomic orbital is monocentric, whereas molecular orbital is polycentric. The number of molecular orbitals formed is equal to the number of combining atomic orbitals. If n atomic orbitals are combining, n molecular orbitals will be formed. The bonding molecular orbital has a lower energy and hence greater stability than the corresponding anti-bonding molecular orbital. And molecular orbitals are filled in accordance with the Aubau principle, Hund's principle, Hund's rule and Pauli's exclusion principle as like atomic orbitals. These are the important postulates of this molecular orbital theory. So, this video lo manam how these molecular orbitals are forming and then what are the conditions for combination of atomic orbitals and uh, types of various molecular orbitals. I am going to discuss about types of various molecular orbitals. So for the formation of molecular orbitals, formation of molecular orbitals, molecular orbital, formation of molecular orbitals, so, there is one approach that is LCAO approach. Linear combination of atomic orbitals. Linear combination of atomic orbitals. So, we have to the atomic orbitals. A function to choose this number. Psi and wave function to indicate just now. So, we already know that the atomic orbitals can be expressed by a wave function called psi. So, what this wave function gives? This gives the Amplitude of the wave. Amplitude of the wave. This wave function gives the amplitude of the electron waves. So we know that these are the solutions of the Schrodinger's wave equation. Solution of the Schrodinger's wave equation. Schrodinger's wave equation. But it is difficult to solve it is difficult to solve the Schrodinger's wave equation for many electron systems. For many electron systems. That's why an approximate method that is linear combination of linear combination of atomic orbitals atomic orbitals was proposed was proposed or has been adopted to explain the formation of molecular orbitals. So we know that the 
atomic orbitals are represented by using the wave function psi and psi gives the psi is the solution of the schrodinger's wave equation and uh, which gives the amplitude of the electron waves amplitude of the electron waves so but uh, solving of schrodinger's wave equation is very difficult for many electron systems that's why an approximate method which is known as linear combination of atomic orbitals has been adopted to explain the formation of formation of molecular orbitals formation of molecular orbital so let me explain the formation of a simple diatomic molecule simple diatomic molecule homonuclear diatomic molecule homonuclear diatomic molecule hydrogen this is homonuclear diatomic molecule So, if diatomic means only there are two atoms, if the two atoms are same, this is called homonuclear. Otherwise, it is heteronuclear. For example, HCl is heteronuclear diatomic molecule. Now, let me explain the method of method, this LCAO method to homonuclear diatomic molecule hydrogen. Homonuclear diatomic molecule hydrogen. Homonuclear diatomic molecule hydrogen and uh, uh, which consists of two hydrogen atoms, which consists of two hydrogen atoms. Two hydrogen atoms. Let the hydrogen atoms are A and B. Let the hydrogen atoms are A and B. So we know that each hydrogen atom, each hydrogen atom has one electron in each hydrogen atom has one electron in 1s orbital, one electron in 1s orbital in its ground state, in its ground state. Then the atomic orbitals are represented. The atomic orbitals, the atomic orbitals of these two hydrogen atoms represented by the wave functions let psi a and psi b so psi a and psi b are the wave functions of atomic orbitals present in the two hydrogen atoms a and b now the formation of molecular orbital the formation of molecular orbital may be represented by psi a plus plus or minus psi b psi a plus linear combination of atomic orbitals is represented as below Mathematically, the formation of molecular orbital may be represented by the linear combination of atomic orbitals. Atomic orbitals as psi molecular orbital is equal to psi A plus or minus psi B. Psi A plus or minus psi B. So these two molecular orbitals, two molecular orbitals are formed as sigma and sigma star. Sigma and sigma star. The two molecular orbitals. Sigma and sigma star are formed as psi. Sigma is equal to sigma is equal to psi a plus psi b, and sigma star is equal to sigma star is equal to psi a minus psi. Psi a minus psi b. The molecular orbital sigma formed by the sigma formed by the Sigma is equal to psi A plus psi B is called bonding molecular orbital and psi star, sigma star, psi A minus psi B is called anti-bonding molecular orbital. Anti-bonding molecular orbital. So, by using this linear combination of atomic orbitals, it is possible to explain the formation of molecular orbitals from atomic orbitals. So, this is the LCAO approach. But uh, qualitatively, qualitatively, the formation of molecular orbitals, qualitatively, the formation of molecular orbitals can be understood by using the concept of interference. By using the concept of interference. So, it already in the atomic structure law, electromagnetic radiation, they can discuss it in Jerry Interference and the merging of two or more waves, we are calling it as the merging of two or more waves. We are calling it as the interference. 
This interference is of two types. One is constructive interference and second one is destructive interference. One is constructive interference, another is destructive interference. So qualitatively, the formation of molecular orbitals can be understood in terms of constructive and destructive interference of the electron waves of the combining atoms. Electron waves of the combining atoms. So in the formation of in the formation of the bonding molecular orbital, the bonding molecular orbital. So we know that constructive interference means so oh, suppose this is the one wave and this is the wave two. And this is the wave three. So if you observe here no, the result interviews, these two waves are the exactly crystal troughs are matching. That's why here Here, no, what is happening that waves constructive and reinforce each other due to con this, con this one reinforce each other. The resultant wave, no, this is constructive interference. But if you observe this, these are two called, are called destructive interference. This is called destructive interference, right? Here, what is happening is here amplitude is here, that's why here destructive interference is occurring. So, the uh, in the formation of bonding molecular orbital, two electron waves of the two electrons waves of the bonding atoms reinforce each other due to constructive interference. But while in the formation of anti-bonding molecular orbital, electron waves cancel each other due to destructive interference. Destructive interference. So the electron waves, electron waves of bonding atoms. Electron waves of bonding atoms reinforce each other. And the uh, electron uh, a bonding molecular orbital form out on Karnam constructive interference jargatum. Yavar the gra uh, electron waves majuro. Constructive interference jargatum mala man kinjur nante connected bonding molecular orbital form out to take destructive interference jargatum mala anti bonding molecular orbital form. Manaki e bonding molecular orbital. Bonding molecular orbital of this point taken at the electron density. Electron density is located. Electron density is located between the two nuclei. Between the two nuclei of bonded atom. Between the two nuclei of bonded atoms. Because of which repulsion, because of which because of this, which repulsion, the repulsion between the nuclei is very less. While in case the anti-bonding orbital, most of the electron, this is in case of bonding molecular orbital. So in bonding molecular orbital, what is happening? Electron density is located between the two nuclei, between the two nuclei of the bonded atoms. Therefore, the repulsion will be, repulsion between the nuclei is very, very less. In case of if you take anti bonding molecular orbital, anti bonding molecular orbital, electron density, electron density is located away from the space, is located away from the space, away from the space between the two nuclei, away from the space between the two nuclei. So, here in anti bonding orbital, there is a nodal plane, there is a Nodal plane. Nodal plane means where the probability of finding the electron is zero. That when we are calling it as the nodal plane. So the, there is a nodal plane between the nuclei. Hence, repulsion between the two nuclei will be very high. Two nuclei will be very, very high. So as repulsion is there, as, you know, as repulsion is very high, the electron plays between nuclei and the repulsion between the nuclei is very high. Electron placed in a bonding molecular orbital tend to hold the nuclei together. So whatever electron density is there in bonding molecular orbital, as it is located between the two nuclei, what it does, this electron density tries to hold the two nuclei. So this is the electron density, this is the nucleus one, this is the nucleus one. As electron density is located between the two nuclei, 
he tries to hold the two nuclei he tries to hold the two nuclei ante electron density ee rendittiki madhyalo undatam valla em jarugutundi ante kanakandi ee rendu nucleus ni kalipi unchataniki idi prayatnistuntundi that's why it stabilizes the molecule it stabilizes the molecule that's why bonding molecular orbital has lower energy lower energy than either of the atomic orbitals than either of the atomic orbitals from which it is formed whereas in case if you take anti bonding molecular orbital so electrons electron density in anti bonding molecular orbital what is happening is it is destabilizing because the reason is destabilizing reason is the electron density electron density is play is placed electron density is located away from the away from the away from the space between the nuclei between the nuclei that's why these two nuclei are repelling each other repelling each other that's why the electrons placed in anti bonding molecular orbital destabilize the molecule destabilize the molecule why it is destabilizing the net repulsion of the electrons is more than the attraction between the attraction between the electrons and nuclei which causes the net increase in energy that's why the bonding molecular orbital has higher energy and anti bonding sorry bonding molecular orbital has lower energy uh, than atomic orbitals whereas anti bonding molecular orbital has higher energy than corresponding atomic orbitals so the energy of the anti bonding orbital is raised above the energy of the parent atomic orbitals that have combined whereas the energy of the bonding molecular orbital has been lower than the parent orbitals lower than the parent orbitals but one point is the total energy of the total energy of the two molecular orbitals remains the same total energy of the total energy of the bonding plus anti bonding is equal to the energy of the two atomic orbitals from which it is formed from which it is formed so how this molecular orbitals are formed basing on this lcao approach was explained thank you for watching trinath chemistry classes so few more things are present in this molecular orbital theory which will be discussed in the next video thank you